What's up, what's up, you guys? It's your boy Geppetto here. First of all, can we salute my damn sweater, though? I'm feeling like, oh, I was gonna say I'm feeling like Bill Cosby, but that's not good. <laughs> I'm feeling real swaggy with this sweater. I recently got into like thrifting and shit, and yeah, man, your boy looking kinda, hey, hey, hey. Anyways, y'all, back with another video, and I want to tell you guys about my Airbnb horror story. So I'm back to show you guys about the Airbnb horror story I had in Atlanta. So 2019 overall was just a freaking horrible year for me. Uh, I had extremely high highs and extremely low lows. So I have to make a video and tell you guys all what happened last year. But anyways, pretty much where I was staying, got flooded and then I got kicked out long story and then I ended up having and none of my friends you know unfortunately had the space or just didn't want me to um crash by them so I had to be in an Airbnb for a while so I was looking for Airbnb for a few days that I could kind of like you know rent long term until I figured out the next place I would be staying if I was gonna look for apartments or whatever the case may be and I y'all it just this story is bananas. So I was actually supposed to be moving to California. So at this time, I had already sold my car. So I was carless in Georgia. I didn't have a stable place to stay. And I was just in a limbo. So I was looking for a Airbnb that I could rent for like a month until I kind of figure stuff out. I was supposed to work on this movie project and um, that's the reason why I was kind of like staying in Georgia for a little while longer. But it's actually a blessing I did move to California because yeah, California had a lot going on. Anyway, so I just knew I needed to stay in an Airbnb in a safe area that was long term and preferably was close to the bus line because like I said, I didn't have a car at the time. This was like the first time since I've been an adult that I did not have a car. So I was looking, I was looking, I was looking. I found an Airbnb that would accommodate me for a month. And it was like, I think because I put for like the month, they or like ex I, I didn't put it exactly for a month. I think I did it for like two weeks, and then I um, was saying if it worked out good, I would have booked it for the month. So I think because I had put in uh, a certain amount of days, they essentially gave me a discount. The house looked good on can uh, on the pictures, and I was like, okay. And it was like apartment style. So I was like, okay, lit, this is perfect. So like, you know, I pretty much had my own little unit. It was um, near the bus line and all that good stuff, so I felt great about it. So this is the sign that I think God was telling me, but I didn't listen, because I've used Airbnb before. And this was the first time I had went to book um, Airbnb and it didn't go through. So I'm like, what the heck? I checked my bank and I have money in there. So I'm just like, why is it declining? So I called Airbnb. Airbnb essentially told me like, hey, it's nothing on our end. Um, check with your bank and then check with the, um, the, what you call it, the homeowner, okay? So I hit the homeowner. Um, it was something very slight with my bank. It was something like, I think I have recently changed addresses or something like that. I can't recall, but it denied it twice. And that particular day, I technically was homeless. I didn't have nowhere to stay and I needed to find a place to stay that night because like I said, didn't know where I was staying, where I was staying at, got flooded out with the place I was renting. 
And then like none of my friends came through for me at the time. But like I said, I'm a grown ass man. That's just how life it out. I've never been in a position before, so I was freaking out. So I just needed some place for like a few weeks that I could like, you know, lock in and comfortably stay at. Got the credit card situation, the debit card situation handled. I booked it. So at that time, my friends, uh, my homegirl's boyfriend, he um, had, I didn't have a car, so he, I had to pick up a check for something I had worked on like 40 minutes away, and he wasn't working at the time. So I was like, hey, if your boyfriend come pick me up from where I'm at and carry me, because it would have just been way too pricey to do it in an Uber. I said, yo, I could fill it tank up with gas, because he, you know, he was doing little odd jobs, and I'd give him a few dollars and whatever. So she said, cool. So he was able to help me go pick up a check I was supposed to get for something, um, help me move some of my stuff, and then carry me to the Airbnb. So cool. The address said Atlanta. So if you're going to rent an Airbnb from Atlanta, really take your time and research the physical address on Google Maps and see if the area, because what's wrong is that a lot of addresses have Atlanta, but it's not really Atlanta. So you might see an address that says Atlanta and it might be College Park. You might see an address that says Atlanta and it's another part of the city. It's not really Atlanta. So I thought it was in the property was in the city of Atlanta, which it was not. So we're driving and um, I'm communicating with the um, host like, hey, you know, I'll be there by like six, seven o'clock. Boop, boop, boop. Thank you for, you know, because I booked it like probably... Uh, I want to say like around 4 p.m. because I was supposed to go stay with another I was supposed to stay with a friend and that didn't work out and I just was like I can't depend on people and I'm in a jacked up situation because I depended on somebody who I was renting from so anyway went ahead and going to the Airbnb we're driving we're driving and as you know the GPS is getting closer and closer to the location I'm just kind of like Yo, this neighborhood looks hella sketchy. But again, I was like, the Airbnb is quite affordable. Um, I could have it for all these for damn near two, three weeks for discounted rate. It's near the bus line. And you know, for all what I'm trying to do, it's the best bet for right now. Cool. So it's like seven something now. And then it's, it's become dark. So we pull into the neighborhood and like I tell you, this looks like the pure hood. And I was like, yo, what the heck is going on? So my homegirl's boyfriend is kind of looking at me like, bruh, you sure you want to stay here? And I was just like, hey man, bruh, like, shoot. I gotta do what I gotta do. This is just temporary until I find a permanent place, you know, find another place to rent or whatever the case may be. And I'm just like, okay. Pull up, I was having an issue because the street we pulled into was like, it had some houses and you know, just people sitting on side of porches or whatever. And it was some like, you know, activities going on. And I was like, well, I don't, and we're like driving kind of slow. So I told my homegirl's boyfriend like, yo, Turn, turn your lights on because I don't want them thinking we about to do a drive-by. I can't afford to get no bullets in me in this car because there is already a sketchy looking area. Okay, cool. We then go and pull up to the actual address. There was this house on the street, the only house on the street that was in complete pitch black darkness. So we drove past the house like kind of twice as we were going up and down the road. And I was like, well, this can't be the house. This can't be the house. This house is in pure black darkness. It looked like something out of a scary movie. So I text the host and I'm like, hey, um, I can't find the address. I see a such and such colored house, but I know this is in the house because it's like in pure black darkness. So he's like, Oh yeah, that's the house. So I was like, you got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. You got me fucked up, nigga. This scary silence of the lamb looking ass house is the house. So I was like, okay. So, you know, my homegirl's boyfriend and I, we got out and we walked to the house and like, I'm talking about 
just no kind of yard lights, no front porch light, no nothing, just pure black darkness. So we go up to the front of the house and then he texted me like, he had like a little um, code to put it in the front. Again, I think that was another sign. This is probably the third sign God was showing me like, do not stay here. <laughs> uh, put in the code, the codes weren't working, the codes weren't working. So then I'm messaging the host, I'm messaging the host, I'm messaging the host. He isn't responding, he isn't responding. I'm calling him, he isn't responding, whatever the case may be. So I wait a few minutes and then he finally is like, hey, go around to the back or whatever the case may be. I like, okay, cool. I go around to the back. Now the back has some lights, but when I tell you it looked like something out of a freaking, I don't know. It was fucking disgusting. It was beer cans, cigarette buds, trash, the freaking, um, the steps to go up to like the units were just like rickety as hell. It was literally huge ash brooches just darting across the steps. So my homegirl's boyfriend and I are just looking at each other like, yo, what the heck? So again, I'm being optimistic. I'm just like, okay. Maybe it just looks really bad outside and probably when I go inside, yo, the pictures online are going to be lit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Go up the steps. I'm literally like kicking the steps so the roaches or whatever could just like run apart or whatever the case may be. And mind you, since I had paid for um, multiple days up front, it was hundreds of dollars out of my account. So, you know, Airbnb had already snatched their coins and I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So we get up, I put in the code, I enter, there's beer cans, cigarette buds, just dusty, dirty, whatever the case may be. Walk into the house, the house literally smells like an ass. It smells like ass, sulfur, corned beef hash, sewage, just earring bags, every bad smell that you can think of, that's what this house smells like. So we both are like, oh, oh, like what the, oh, oh, mm, mm. So I'm like, what the fuck? And I could hear like a TV going on. So I was like, is somebody here? You know what I mean? So I'm walking around, the kitchen was an absolute mess, dirty. I go into the freaking bathroom or whatever the case may be. There's like a huge hole, like in just in the wall, like, and he kind of like covered it over with some kind of like I don't know saran wrap or something. It looked crazy as hell. So I'm looking around like, yo, there's no possible way I could stay. So I was just like, okay, maybe the bedroom looks a little better. Open up the bedroom door and two roaches immediately run across the room so i'm like yeah no not doing it so i message the host and i'm just like yo bro like what like this apartment is absolutely disgusting and he's like yo i'm so sorry um i do have a tenant i inherited with this property and he stays there and he never cleans the place and i was like but bro this is roach infested it's dirty, it smells like ass and cigarettes, and I booked your property for multiple days. And he's like, yeah, my bad, bro. And then he had the audacity to ask me, so are you gonna stay the night and you know, do your whole um, uh, arrangement? Are you gonna stay for a couple of weeks? I was like, no. I was like, are you crazy? Thank God. I was smart enough that I just was like, okay, let me start taking pictures. So I just started taking pictures of everything I'm seeing. Dirty ass, you know, plagues, this, that. I'm just taking pictures. Snap, snap. And I go and I immediately contact Airbnb. So Airbnb, at first, they were trying to be, because, you know, a lot of companies, when after they take your money, it's a hassle to get um, your money back. So... First, I was telling Airbnb, like, look, there's no possible way I could stay here. It looks, un you know, it's unsettling. It looks unsafe. 
this place is just freaking disgusting. And then the representative I was working with, she was just like, oh, well, let's try to get in contact with the host to see if he could. I'm like, no, he cannot come and clean it up. This house needs to be pressure washed and fumigated. Matter of fact, the whole house just needs to be demolished. I cannot believe this was even on Airbnb. So she was like, okay. So I was like, ma'am, I have pictures. I like, I have pictures. Uh, and then at this time it was like, eight no it was later it was like nine or ten o'clock so i'm like ma'am i have pictures let me send them to you to show you how bad it is so she says okay cool i go in the app and i immediately go and i'm just like and she, she was nice she, she she was saying like they had to take some time to i guess contact the host so for him to find like rectify the situation and I was just like, okay, no, y'all don't know how bad this is. So she did offer me like, if I'm not mistaken, she said, well, while we contact the host, um, you can go um, to like a nearby restaurant. I think she said she was gonna like give me, it was like a voucher or like a credit for like, first she said like 15 bucks for me to go get something to eat or something, it was something like that. I never got that by the way. So um, she said, just wait. So I was like, okay, do you want me to send you pictures of how bad this place is? She said, yeah, sure. I started uploading the pictures in the Airbnb app. When I tell you when the representative came back, she was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna ask for an immediate refund for you. The place, like she saw how crazy the property looked. And I was, and then she's like, I am so sorry about this. She's like, yes, you're gonna get your money back. And, and at the time, I'm not gonna lie, because I was, you know, kicked out of where I was at. My money was kind of, so I did have a, a little bit of bread in the bank, but I didn't have enough. So I was just like, well, okay, well, are y'all gonna give me like an immediate refund so I could book someplace else? And she's like, no, it depends on your bank. So I'm just like, so pretty much, I spent all these hundreds of dollars to book this place for uh, multiple days and I really can't afford to wait until y'all give me this back but now I gotta wait for my money so she was like yeah so she was like well let me see what you could do if I'm not mistaken Airbnb gave me like a credit for like I think it was like one night so she the representative she was great uh, she sounded Indian I forgot her name she like was like look i'm gonna help you find a place in that area that has good reviews or whatever the case may be and i uh, luckily was able to get a place for that night and like for two nights after and they gave me like a little discount but when i tell y'all it was like a nightmare so just a tip if you're coming to atlanta Please, and you're gonna use Airbnb, please research your property thoroughly. And that's Airbnb as a whole, because yeah, don't trust this uh, the address having um, Atlanta on it or just whatever. Make sure you might have to pay a little bit more. Don't rely on just getting like a cheap, and my Airbnb wasn't like super cheap. It was probably like 50, 60 bucks a night. And um, I thought it was it's still cheaper than a damn hotel, but I just was like, yeah, I felt like somebody probably got murdered in that property. It was so disgusting. But yeah, so Airbnb, eventually I did get my money back, but I mean, it was just a headache because I at least thought that when I booked that place, I could chill for a few weeks as I tried to figure out where I was going to move to next because I'm just a person. I don't really like asking people for nothing and I don't like being a burden to nobody. So it was just like yeah it was just a crazy time anyway you guys that's my airbnb living in atlanta horror story just make sure you check thoroughly check out the places you rent follow me on instagram i-t-s-g-i-p-p-e-t-t-o videos every tuesday and thursday you guys i'm coming and man if you got any fly sweaters you want to send your boy yo email me i'll give you my p.o box man i like fly sweaters I like watches and I like hats. <laughs> you dig? Fashion over. I want to be a fashion over daddy. I want to be male fashion over. <laughs> Anyways, y'all. Peace out.